In simple harmonic motion, we've been looking at examples or situations where we've assumed that there was no resistance at all, and those are not very realistic. So maybe we should write this down. So in real life, so sort of in more realistic situations, of course there are things that slow it down, like air resistance, uh, friction, um, etc. Those cause the system in this case, whatever is undergoing simple harmonic motion, um, to dissipate energy. And what it means to dissipate energy means you sort of, you lose thermal energy here. Well, mainly thermal at least. So when you dissipate energy, what it means is you lose energy, mainly in the form of thermal energy, so in the form of heat, for example. Sometimes it can be sound and things like that. Um, something else interesting is that these forces, because these are, these are forces here, they act opposite to the motion. Which means if you move to the right, then it acts to the left. If you move to the left, it acts to the right. So they're always acting opposite to the motion. And the result, this is the key thing here, the result is that um, the oscillations will eventually stop. So the oscillations, they'll, I mean, they'll get smaller and smaller until they eventually stop. So you could have a situation like um, with your spring or a mass that's got its springs, for example, like we were looking at before, something like this right here, it eventually comes to rest. I mean, it eventually stops it stops at equilibrium. Right, that's eventually going to happen. Just like if you have a pendulum, your pendulum which is going back and forth, for example, it eventually stops at equilibrium. So this also happens. I mean, anything, any real life situation, it doesn't keep oscillating forever. I mean, it doesn't go back and forth forever. In real life, friction, for example, and air resistance will cause it to stop, just like over here. So in these real life situations, then, we can actually define what a damped oscillation is. So we're going to say it, maybe I'll do it in blue. So a damped, this is the, this, this thing called damping here. So damped oscillations. What are those? Those are things where the oscillations with resistive forces. So in other words, what we just talked about here. So in other words, um, the oscillations get smaller and smaller. This is really what we mean. So when we say they're damped, that's what we mean. It's, it's like something is slowing them down. It's air resistance or frictions, uh, or friction. So oscillations get smaller and smaller. They eventually stop. These are real life situations here. So this is sort of the definition of damping. So when we say damping, we're implying that there's a resistive force. That resistive force can be air resistance, friction, whatever. Now we can actually look at an example here. I've got uh, this one right here. So let's take a look at this oscillation here. Now this is a pendulum. This is a PHET animation. So let's say we started off at 30 degrees and we let it go. So it goes back and forth and back and forth because we assumed there was no friction, which was not realistic. In real life, what really happens, let's just do lots. So watch carefully. It starts off at plus 30 over here and minus 30. So watch carefully where this pendulum is compared to these blue dots here. As I add lots of friction, for example, every oscillation is going to get less and less and less and less until it eventually stops. And that is the idea behind damping. So damping happens just that when you have this effect here. So what can we do then? Well, we can look at um, a graph then of undamped oscillations. So we can do those. So let's say we looked at an example of position versus time. In seconds, so and we're going to have position. So in this case, right here, x. And we're going to do the same sort of graph here. So time over here and position as 
in meters. So this one right here, if it was undamped, that means there are no resistive forces. So that means it's just going to start off and just go sort of same height all the time. I'm just trying to draw it in the same height, of course. So in other words, it stays the same. But if it is damped, what happens, of course, is that this right here goes less and then less and then less and then less. Something like that. And in fact, if you look at this right here, if you did sort of a graph of this thing right here like this, and a graph of sort of this thing right here like this, it's actually exponential. So it could actually be written as an exponential. So this is what really happens in real life. If these are here your oscillations, it starts off sort of with a maximum amplitude and it goes less amplitude, less amplitude, even less, until it's eventually zero, like our pendulum was. This could have been a graph of our little pendulum that was oscillating. So that's an example of damped oscillations. And now we actually have different types of damped oscillations. So we have something that's underdamped. So underdamped, that's when, um, well, the amplitude eventually, um, well, gradually decreases. So that's, that's what we've just looked at here. So it gradually decreases. And like I said before, it's exponential. So this is actually the same graph that we just did. So this is time in seconds, and this is x in meters. And it's a graph that'll go sort of like, yeah, less and less and less and less. So something like, like that. So like I said before, it'll be something that's sort of exponential, something like that. Now we have what's called critically damped. That's something important. That's when the damping because there's, there's this form as well here. So this damping, it's large enough. This is a key thing. This is actually a very special case of damping here. So it's large enough that the system, uh, well, it returns to equilibrium. So it returns to sort of where it wants to be uh, as fast as possible. This is the key thing here. So as fast as possible. So the amount of time it takes you is the least it could possibly be, and I'll say without oscillations. So in other words, it doesn't oscillate back and forth, it basically just goes down. So that is critically damped. So that, an example of that, if this is your time in seconds, and this is your position, or your displacement in meters, and then this here would be something that starts off, you know, like this, or so basically just goes near, just goes down as fast as it possibly could. So it didn't oscillate back and forth. This is critically damped. Now there's something else called overdamped, and it looks a lot the same. Okay, so this is where the damping. This is it's like before, so it's large enough. Um, to make the system, how can I say this here? To make the, I better make this clear here. To make the system uh, return to equilibrium. So just like before, except this is the key thing here, um, without oscillating, just like critical damping was. So it seems an awful lot like critical damping, except it's much slower. So the key difference between critically damped and overdamped, see both of them make the system return to equilibrium without oscillations. But one of them does it as fast as possible, so it goes So let's say this time here it took from here to here is the shortest it could possibly be. Whereas over here, and this may not be so obvious here, but I'll just do a time in seconds and your position in meters. So this one, although it only, uh, although it doesn't do any oscillations, maybe it's just really, just takes a lot longer to sort of reach this. So this here is just, it's over damped. In other words, it takes it a long time to actually reach its equilibrium. Whereas critically damped, it basically does it as quick as it could. Couldn't go any quicker or else you'd have an oscillation or unless it would actually sort of go down. So it would actually oscillate. The whole idea between behind critically damped is that it doesn't do any oscillation, so it just goes boom, down. 
see in underdamped, for example, it oscillates some a few times, and the oscillation just sort of gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Over here, there's uh, no oscillations in critically damped. It just goes right down as fast as possible without oscillations. And overdamped, still no oscillations, but it just takes a lot longer. So that's the difference, and that's how damping works. So damping is a more real-life situation. This is really what happens here, that we have these resistive forces, and those, um, those resistive forces actually cause the oscillations to get smaller and smaller and eventually stop.